Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how you can utilize CSS preprocessors to create awesome animations. So a note about CSS preprocessors is that they let you write less code using their programming interface by introducing like for loops and you know uh, defining variables and all sort of things like if else conditions that CSS by itself doesn't support since CSS is not really a language or a programming language and using those obviously you can write less code and more like easily maintainable code as well I know a lot of companies if not all uh, use uh, CSS preprocessors like less or SAS and then uh, well, today I'm going to be showing some of the functionalities of SAS preprocessors and Compass to achieve this nice animation over here, right? So let's get started. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to kotus.com code it. He has always created a prototype. And then what I'm going to do is always creating a container. Within the container, I create uh, the first two papers. Let's say this is going to be like the default, uh, you know, the, 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 our, our sort of book or notebook or whatever. So let's just style the container for now. Let's center it in the page using uh, position absolutes as always. And uh, with, let's just start by giving it a top 50%, left 50%, and then transform, translate, minus 50%, and minus 50%, right? And then by default, let's just give it a width of maybe 20 pixel and height of 20 pixel. Give it a background of red so that you can see where it stands. And then within that, we have our papers, right? I'm gonna remove this background for now. And then I'll say container paper. I'll give it a width of maybe 35 pixel, height of 45 pixel, background, white and then a border of maybe five pixels solid and then blue violet right making sure that the position absolute so that they pile up stack up on top of each other and then i'm gonna give it a border left none so you can see that we have this and then obviously for the second paper, I need to just rotate it 180 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to do container, paper, and then nth child, second. And then I will just use transform, uh, rotate 180 degrees, right? So as you can see, nothing really changed. Just because I have to change the uh, transform origin. So if I just comment this out, so right now the transform origin is right here. So when you rotate it, it just kind of rotates it on top of itself. I need to move the transform origin right here, right? So in order to do that, I'll say transform origin zero on X axis and in the middle, of course, for the Y axis, right? So now if I uncomment this, you'll see that we have our default view. Now, to add a bit of papers, I'm going to just copy this and paste maybe 10 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? And the whole idea is that all these uh, papers that I define are going to just have a rotation of minus 180 degrees, right? Uh, on uh, Y axis, because this is the uh, axis that they are rotating around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so then we have 10 papers, right? From the third paper to the 12th paper. And this is where the preprocessor comes in. So in Codity, you can go to this settings and then choose SCSS. So just to give you a clue of what SCSS is, is the newest uh, sort of version of SAS preprocessor. So go to Google and search for it, the first link. We can see that it says SAS is the most mature, stable, and powerful professional grade CSS extension language in the world, right? 
So with that said, what I want to do is that I want to say all of my papers and I will do like this. All of my papers, since I have already uh, enabled SAS, I'm going to say I'm going to use a for loop. And this is basically how I can loop using SAS, right? So for i, variable i from 3, because I already set 1 and 2 for this default notebook. So from, from 3 through 12, right? And then I will, so in order to choose each of these papers, you can always use nth child. So nth child 3, 4, 5, 6, and using uh, SAS syntax, the way you do that is that you define the main parent, so you can have like, uh, you know, classes defined within the uh, the other classes, just the way you do in HTML. So container paper, and then for variable i from 3 through uh, 12, and then I will just use this syntax, which is specific to SAS again, nth nth or nth child and then I will use here i right so what happens here it just does a for loop from 3 and then replaces the i with 3 4 5 6 7 up until 12 but the way you have to just pass this variable uh, in the class definitions here is using this syntax right so this is not something I want to talk about you can go ahead and read about it uh, by just you know typing like SAS helpers or SAS functions and variables or looking at its documentation. So with that said, this nth child with this format refers to the paper. So it's just going to be paper nh3, nh4, nh5, and then within that, I'm going to say, uh, well, at the moment I haven't defined any animation, so let's define our animation. That is happening over here. Let's first define the animation. So I'm going to do keyframes, uh, let's say flip, and then what I'm going to do is that I don't want to do anything on the zero. So zero percent uh, default of it, whatever those papers should be, and then thirty percent. I'm going to say transform, rotate, and then what? Minus one hundred eighty degrees, right? And then I want it to be like that up until the end, right? So there is like a pause uh, from 30% to 100% using the same variable, right? So though, as you can see here, there is a bit of a perspective going on. Let me just add a perspective on the parent container. So perspective, maybe 160 uh, pixel. Uh, for those of you who doesn't know how this works, I will put a link of the tutorial I'm talking about the perspective down here so you can go and watch it and come back to this tutorial. But for now, uh, basically we are transforming our view into a 3D space, right? And there is this perspective of 160 uh, pixel from where our viewpoint is to where this uh, element over here is, right? So going back, we have defined our flipping animation. And then what I'm going to do is that here I will say animation, then the name of our animation, maybe 2.5 seconds, then uh, infinite, and then ease in and out as the timing function. As you can see, this rotates in a, on, on a, a wrong uh, axis, so I'll just change it to Y, because that's the axis I want it to rotate, right? You can see that we already got kind of like uh, sort of the animation that we want, right? So now the cool thing about it is that I can give different uh, delay function using this, right? Otherwise, without using this four SAS thingy, I had to go one by one, write everything that I'm writing within here for each of those, right? So here I'm going to say animation delay. Let's put maybe just 0 0.5 seconds, right? So all of them right now have 0 0.5 seconds, but you know that we have a variable over here. So we can utilize these variables and multiply it to this value to get like different animation delays. And to do that, I'm going to say i multiply by 0 0.5 seconds, right? So right now you can see that we have all these, but 
the, the, the bad thing about it is that all the delays are, uh, you know, from the span perspective, they are all the same, right? So the first one comes in, let's say, 3 multiplied by, uh, you know, 0 0.5, then the fourth one, the fifth one, but we want to have different delays, right? And that's how this cool animation is generated because initially it's slow and then the animation gets faster, right? So slow start and then getting faster. So in order to achieve something like that, I use uh, math functions and by math functions specifically logarithmic functions, right? So if I plot the log x here, you can see that assuming that this is the number of our iterations, right? So number of elements or number of papers, so this is one, two, three, four, five, you can see that if I use this function, the delay in the beginning here is bigger, 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 and then it gets smaller, 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 right? And that is exactly what we want. So as again, I say, let's assume that this is the number of elements that I have. So first one, second one, third one, fourth one, you can see that when I move over here, and this is our delay, the delay is quite big, but then it gets slower, 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 slower. And that is pretty much what we want to utilize, right? And in order to use logarithmic function, we have to use another preprocessor, which is called compass, right? Just to, just to show you what exactly it is. So if I go to compass, you can see what it is. Uh, some sort of an open source CSS authoring framework and the good thing about Compass is that it gives you math functions that CSS doesn't have it originally. JavaScript has it and we want to use the, the log function, right? So if you search for Compass math helpers, you can see that it provides you with some really cool like pi, sine, cosine, tangent and then what we want to use is logarithm, right? So here, what I want to do, self, I will use logarithm of i, right? So you can see that now the animation change giving different delay functions based on the logarithmic function, meaning that really big delays in the beginning and then smaller delays, right? Really big, smaller, right? In a very nice and smooth you know, way, like using this function, right? And in Codity, Compass is kind of supported through the SAS. So just go ahead and choose SCSS and Compass is already provided for you, right? Uh, so with that said, we've already created some sort of a cool animation, but you can see there's a bit of a, you know, problem here. And that's because we have to say, I want my transform style to preserve my 3D, right? So this is the scene that I have. And now you can see that it pretty much has this cool flipping animation over here. You can go ahead and maybe change this uh, to just move it a little bit further down. Let me switch the layout over here. It's easier. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to define a very, I'm going to just remove the transform, centering it using absolute. I'm just going to use uh, the uh, basically let's define like a position relative let's not center it that way using absolute positioning and then i will choose maybe 100 pixel and auto so it should center it in our page and you can see that it has a margin 10 and then it has like a sort of like a uh, width and height of 20 and perspective and since we have defined the papers absolute they look pretty cool, like the thing that we wanted, right? So I hope you like this tutorial. The things that I want to overview and go through again is using SAS and Compass CSS preprocessors. And also go ahead and learn what is the syntax that you can use in terms of for loops, in terms of variables. Uh, and everything that actually makes your life much easier specifically for creating animations like this, right? Uh, what I can say is that learning a preprocessor, whether it's SAS, whether it's less, it's a must. So go ahead and learn it as much as you can. A bunch of tutorials in the future that I'm going to talk about utilizes those preprocessors. So get ready for them, right?
All right, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do to be notified of the next uh, tutorials. And if you like this tutorial, please go ahead and like and share as much as you can so that I can continue teaching you all these cool tutorials. Have a good day and night. Goodbye.